Kind of wanted to ask about your group and, and also about how um, uh, Gavin Fowler helped you guys out. I know he's been a big part of your unit, but but with Jay being you know a little bit limited after the heart attack, what was your experience on Saturday like? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, with Coach Hill being being a little affected by the heart attack, Coach, Coach Gavin stepped up pretty big. He uh, we always joke that he's uh, Coach Hill 2.0. Uh, he tries to you know do do what. It, do what the great coaches do, and Coach Hill's one of the great coaches that he's trying to emulate. And so, um, yeah, we trust Coach Fowler, and uh, he helped with the communicate up with uh, Coach Hill in the booth about rotation, about how to fix coverages. We had, we, with the iPads, we could rewatch things, and uh, hearing what Coach Hill had to say through Coach Gavin was fun. Um, so yeah, it was it was a cool experience to kind of have that technology. Uh, obviously, it's different than what we expected, but it was pretty, pretty seamless and um, pretty fun as well. You touched on the tablets. I just was curious, as a defender, did the helmet communication have much of an impact from your viewpoint, or was the tablets kind of the biggest change that that you saw on, on Saturday? Yeah, from my viewpoint, the tablets were the biggest, uh, I guess, difference maker from last season, and being able to rewatch the play if you had a question on what routes were run or what the O-line run pass block looked like, um, just where your drop was in relation to where it should have been. Just having that kind of instant feedback was really nice. Um, obviously, we watch film every day, and being able to do that in the game helped a lot. So super grateful for that technology. We'll take questions from Mitch Harper and then Jay Catch. Yeah, Talon, uh, we've heard a lot about the, the mindsets different with this defense this year. Is there anything different in year two under Coach Hill with this scheme that's maybe evolved to, you know, change things up as well? That's a good question. Um, I think Coach Hill, he he has his defense that he loves, and there's obviously tweaks that are being made week by week for the opponent um, just to fine tune the game plan to be better, more effective against certain teams and what they like to do. Um, the second year under Coach Hill is definitely a lot better. We have a better understanding of what's going on, why he's calling what he's calling, um, and then just the um, exactness or like neatness of executing the plays is, has been the biggest improvement. And I think that's what helped with getting pressure on the quarterback last night, with having you know better coverage last night, kind of all working together just caused more chaos than we did last year. And, and just wanted to uh, also add uh, or ask you, uh, how much does it help the confidence of the defense when you're seeing the other side of the ball, the offense with Jake and those guys having as much success to where they're they're putting up numbers and making your guys' job a little bit easier too, which is maybe how the impact that has on the defense, the offense success. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome. We talk about a lot about complementary football and, you know, all three phases, defense, offense, special teams have to work together. And I think, I think Saturday night was a perfect example of that. We had, um, for, I mean, special teams can be cleaned up a little bit. I mean, everything cleaned up, but like we had that fourth, that punt fake stop, which instead of our offense with great field position, um, we had great kicks by Will for, you know, mostly touchbacks. And so it was very, uh, very fun as a defender to kind of see that complimentary football going, gelling together. And um, like you said, yeah, it is fun to see the offense rolling, doing their thing. And obviously, we get to practice against them every day. And so we know the work they put in and the uh, especially in the off season as well, in the weight room and on the field and all fall camp. So it was fun to kind of see them go against someone else besides ourselves and put up some good numbers. Alan, you guys rotated very heavily on, on Saturday, just at all positions on the defense. Is that going to be a thing going forward or is that kind of a one-off in your mind? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if I have a clear answer for you because I'm not the coach and I don't know what's going on exactly in his mind, but um, I think just to try to find the guys who will make plays, the guys who do their job every play is what he was kind of hoping to get out of rotating so many uh, so many people and um, moving forward, uh, it's gonna be up to him. Just excited to be able to play. And like you said, yeah, lots of guys had lots of opportunities on Saturday to play and it's uh, it's fun to see, especially the young, young freshmen who get their first first snaps of college football to come off and they're all excited and it's fun to be part of that with them, especially in the safety room because we're so close. SMU appears to be pretty RPO heavy with their offense. What's your evaluation of them? 
Yeah, yeah, just from the quick film study I've done so far, uh, you're right, they, they like the RPOs, they're, they're, they're good athletes, really good team, well coached, and so we're excited to kind of get an opportunity to prepare quick and be ready to go down there and play against that type of style. And uh, it is, I was part of the team a couple years ago in the bowl game that I was able to play against that offense. So was, um, that was a fun game. We ended up obviously winning that one. And, um, so that was fun to be part of that. And so excited to, again, re fine tune, see what they're doing, see what they're running. Like you said, the RPOs, they're uh, obviously a challenge, but um, we've been coached well on how to handle those. And so we're excited to execute that. We'll wrap up with questions from Sean Walker and then Jared Lloyd. Yeah, Talon, uh, J-Rob told us after the game that when uh, Coach Hill went down to the field and, and saw you guys, there was a line of like 80 people waiting to, to shake his hand and to give him a hug and, and, and all that. He said that was the best part of his game, like the best part of his day, even more than the win in a lot of ways. Did you kind of feel that a little bit? And, and I guess what did it mean to you seeing Coach Hill there not only as your DC, but also your safeties coach, I guess, you know, a guy who just went through this traumatic medical episode and, and he wants the focus on you guys. He wants to be with you guys on game day. Just what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it means it means a lot. Um, pretty, pretty heavy to, you know, learn about what happened to him in the team, in our team meeting and then figuring out, you know, he had two surgeries and that he was still going to be at the game was pretty, uh, pretty strong testament to his love and care for the team. And uh, like you said, he, he didn't want it to be about him. Um, and the end of, you know, we're getting out of what happened. And, um, but he's very, you know, player oriented and wants us to be the focus. He, and so it was pretty special to see him there. And uh, he, j Rob's right, there was like, all, the whole team wanted to just, you know, have him about offense and defense, which goes to show that how um, good of a coach he is and um, just super personable with each player, even on the offensive side, too. Go ahead, Jared. Alan, you guys went through the transition for the Big 12 last year. Now you're in year two. SMU is going through that transition now into the ACC. As a player, does that impact you at all do you think about did you think about it last year or was is it one of those things that kind of is more in our realm as far as talking about it outside of the program yeah i think it's more outside of the programs um i mean obviously it's on people's minds but at the end of the day it's football and you get to play football it doesn't really matter who you get to play against and so um, i know for us last year we were super excited for our opportunity to be in the big 12 and i'm sure smu is super excited for their opportunity to be part of the acc and play whoever. I mean, we're not in the same conference, but we get to play each other. It's Friday night football this week, and we, we're just, both programs will be excited to play each other. So we're super excited for the opportunity. Last thing, you touched on this, Alan, but the, the, the jump from week one, week two, what needs to happen? Every year you want to make a big jump between those the game one and game two. So what needs to happen uh, before you guys take the field on Friday? Yeah, just clean up. Uh, we had you know, well, those missed up, missed opportunities on Saturday for turnovers, interceptions, uh, fumble recoveries, forced fumbles. So cleaning up that, being more aggressive on that end as a defense, um, as a whole team, just cleaning up small things here and there, uh, and being able to execute things cleaner um, to just cause more chaos as a defense, especially, and then um, score more points as a team. Thanks, Talon. Looks like that's all the questions we have for you today. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you.